Hi Grade Sixes. Today we're going to be looking at the second extract from Kinsuke's Kingdom. And hopefully you've answered the questions. We're going to do some corrections and write some elaboration. That means you should be making additional notes, adding to your answers and adding more detail to the information you already have. Uh, you received um, a video where I read the extract to you and it's also in your textbook on page 82 and the questions were um, also following there in your textbook so I'm going to start from question number one from whose point of view is the excerpt told and what is he doing All right. so the point of view they want to know who is telling the story who is the narrator so we want to see who, from whose perspective is the story being told. The story is being told from Michael's point of view. So you could have worded this in a number of ways, but here are some ideas. And if you, you will see similar questions again in the future. So if you can learn this wording, it will help you. You could have worded it by saying the story is being narrated by Michael. Another nice way of phrasing it is to say the story is written from a first-person perspective. That means it's from the main character's point of view. The question has two parts. They also want to know what is he doing. So they want to know what Michael is doing. While he's telling this part of the story, Michael is at the wheel. You could have worded it slightly differently. You could have said Michael is steering the boat. Or you could have described the atmosphere in a longer sentence. Michael is alone at night, steering the boat in the darkness. Anything along those lines is fine. You could have said Michael is alone in the cockpit. I've heard a few people mentioning that he was writing in his diary as he steers or navigates the boat. Right, so anything along those lines is fine. Today we're not ticking or putting crosses, but simply elaborating or writing more detail onto the answers that we already have. Number two. What problems are the family facing? Make a list. So they want to know what challenges are the family facing. If they ask for the family or for a group of characters, they want you to mention each family member. They are facing, there are many problems that they're facing, so they want you to make a long list. So this answer should not be one short little sentence. It should be detailed. And if you haven't written a detailed answer, then have a look at the next information and add a bit more elaboration to your answer. You don't have to word your answer exactly the same as mine, but here is an idea. Storms have blown the boat north. That means they are off course. They're actually lost at sea. You could have mentioned the challenge, the rudder cable has snapped. It's difficult to steer the boat. So that means they don't have 100% control of where the boat is going. The self-steering doesn't work. That's another important challenge. So that means someone has to be at the wheel all the time. That's why Michael is at the wheel in the middle of the night alone. And a very important problem or challenge is that mum is sick. You could have elaborated on that. She's not eating. You could have said that she's only drinking sugared water. She cannot help in the boat. Now, mum's job is important because she is the one who does the navigation for them. She is unable to navigate for them. That is one of the reasons they are off course or lost at sea. All right. We could have also mentioned to Dad that he's tired and weak. He's laying down while Michael's steering the boat. All right, good. I hope you've elaborated on your answers. Number three. What are Mum and Dad's jobs on the boat? Now, they, are, they say hint, look up the words rudder, chart and navigation to give you more of a clue about what they actually do. So a rudder is that bottom piece on the boat. It helps to to steer the boat in the right direction. Navigation means to use charts and compasses and navigation tools to plot a course. A chart could be a map or something that shows directions, distances, and all these three things are important in sailing around the world. So to answer the question, you must mention both mum and dad's jobs. Now they have many jobs, so you need to explain what Michael's parents do in detail. Let's start with Dad. Dad fixes the equipment on the boat. You could have mentioned also that he brews down in the um, bottom of the boat. You could have mentioned that he um, tries to fix the rudder. Mum 
she navigates. So that's a very important job because she reads the maps and decides which direction they should go. She charts their course, how for that far they should go, and etc. Uh, you could also mention, in addition, that both mum and dad work together on other tasks. So together as a family, they may do things like cooking, cleaning, etc. on the boat. Make sure that you've mentioned both mum and dad's um, names somewhere. Number three, why don't they send a mayday signal? What does this tell you about mum and dad's characters? All right. So mayday is an internationally recognized distress signal. A mayday signal is only to be used in life-threatening situations. It's like an SOS. It's a call for help. So they have not sent a mayday signal, although they are, are in major trouble. And they want to know why. And also, what does this tell you about mum and dad's characters? So, dad wants to put out a mayday signal. And we know that mum does not want to put out a mayday signal. So there's a little bit of conflict there. Mum says that giving the signal is giving up. So we can infer, what can we infer, what can we guess about mum and dad's personality, their character, from their attitude toward giving the mayday signal? All right, so first you need to answer the first part of the question. You should be using full sentences. If you haven't used full sentences, please go and change yours into full sentences. Here's an example. Dad wants to send a mayday signal. But mum won't let him because she says this is giving in. She says she won't give in. So that's the reason why. Because of mum. She's the one who's being a little bit stubborn perhaps and not wanting to, to give up. Now, what does this tell you about each of them, mum and dad? I'll start with dad. This tells us that dad, and then you can go on to elaborate a little bit. I've said um, perhaps he's being more careful. Maybe you said sensible. Maybe you said maybe he's more cautious than mum. He is concerned for their safety. All right. So he's perhaps worried or anxious. Mum wants to persevere. So as long as you've mentioned something along the lines of she has more grit, she doesn't want to give up. Um, and remember their goal is to sail around the world. So she does not want to give up that goal no matter the cost. And perhaps dad is being a little bit more pragmatic or a little bit practical saying that they may have to give up for their safety. So you don't need to word yours exactly the same as mine, but please go and add more detail. Number five, which words in the first and last paragraph describe the atmosphere and tell you how Michael is feeling? Have you ever felt like this and why? Now I hope that you're really putting your teeth into this these answers and that you're really writing meaty detailed answers. Let's see, words. They want you to find individual words or short parts of sentences, so they don't want whole sentences. They want the words to come from the first and last paragraph. Now the first and last paragraph are quite short, so you'll have to look carefully. They want you to describe, so you're looking for describing words. And they want you to describe the atmosphere. So the words that you're going to be looking for are probably going to be maybe adjectives or maybe words that could describe the mood or the tone. So in this sentence, the atmosphere means the mood, the tone or the feeling and how it reflects how Michael is feeling. They want to know which adjectives reflect the way Michael is feeling. Remember, he's alone, it's dark, they're experiencing many challenges and problems, so he will not be feeling positive. So, if you didn't know how to word the answer, you could perhaps make a list with a colon, like I did. I said, in the first paragraph, I found the words, then I put a colon to start a list. Just to show you quickly, the very first few lines, that is the first paragraph. All right. So, I found the words dark, and then no moon and no stars. Uh, also, the word calm. Now, if you haven't explained a little, I'd like you to go back and explain a little about the words that you've chosen. So, for example, a word which describes the atmosphere is dark, which reflects Michael's mood. His mood is also dark. And here's a nice um, phrase that you can use in the future, because there is a sense of foreboding. Foreboding means a sense that something bad is about to happen. Now, we haven't read further in the book yet, but this darkness and this aloneness is, is a clue as to the fact that something bad is about to happen. 
You could have also described why you chose the words no stars and no moon. I said that they emphasize the fact that Michael is feeling alone and helpless. It's completely dark out on the open sea, no lights at all to guide him. Some people chose the word calm, and that's perfectly fine. I've used said that the word calm expresses the calm sea between the storms. It also gives us a feeling of stillness and quiet, maybe emphasizing that he's alone, there's nobody around, it's still. So he's very isolated, far from anything, right in the middle of the sea. Now they ask you to find a word or words in the first and last paragraph. So in the last paragraph, just to show you quickly, the last paragraph are those few sentences right at the bottom. Even though the paragraphs were not numbered, you can see that they are paragraphs because they've left a line between each paragraph. All right. So that's the very short last paragraph there. I said in the last paragraph, I found the words dark and black, which create a depressing atmosphere, a dark, foreboding um, mood. And those words reflect how Michael is feeling. He's not feeling upbeat, enthusiastic, um, light and airy. He's feeling dark and heavy. So you could have mentioned any words to describe how he's feeling. You could have said you think he feels worried or anxious, maybe depressed or sad, hopeless and alone, maybe lonely. Now they want you to speak further. They want you to say, have you ever felt like this? So the reason they asking you to do this is because they want to know if you can express your own thoughts and feelings in writing. So please, when you see a question like this, don't just jump the gun and write no, or yes, or maybe. They want you to think deeply because they're trying to test or trying to assess if you're able to write about your own thoughts and feelings and opinions. So they want you to stop and think and try and remember a time when you were in a similar mood to the one that you've mentioned previously. So perhaps you mentioned that Michael is anxious or, or afraid, or maybe you've mentioned that he's depressed or sad. They want you to try and reflect back on a time when you felt similar. And they want you to say why. That means they want you to describe how you felt and also to describe the situation. You don't have to write things that are extremely personal if you don't want to, but they do want you to practice descri uh, using descriptive writing. So you decide how much you want to expose yourself, that's fine, but just make sure that you have something to write about and that you can practice using your adjectives and describing. So state whether you felt the same way as Michael before. Describe what that was like. Now, some people said to me, Ms. T, I have never felt alone before. Well, I've never been depressed or I've never felt the way that Michael was feeling. That's perfectly fine and acceptable if you feel that way. But then you need to explain why you think that that is. So you'll answer in your own words. But make sure that you've used full sentences. If a sentence doesn't look full, you go and do a correction or edit it so that it makes a complete sentence. To answer this question fully, you need to write a short paragraph. You could even write two paragraphs if you like, but you can't answer all of this in one sentence. Okay, good. If you're unsure of how to structure your answer, how to build your answer, here's an example. You could have said something along the lines of, there was a time when I was younger, in grade three, in pre-primary, in wherever, when I felt, then state the emotion that you felt, sad, alone, helpless, like Michael does in this part of the story. And then you can go on to describe a little bit more about how you're feeling and what happened. You could say, at the time, or at that time, I, and then go on to describe in your own words. You could have said something like this. I have felt hopeless, lonely, helpless, like Michael. I felt like this when, blah, 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 blah. You could have also described how you felt physically. So I have felt like this, and when I felt like this, I was in a cold sweat, I was shivering or shaking or whatever you want to say. If you did not feel like, if you've never felt this way, you could say, I have not felt um, helpless like Michael does in the story. And then explain why. For example, I think that the reason why I've never felt the same way is because. And then you can go on to describe why. Perhaps you can say, because my parents have taught me to be very confident, or because I have a very close family who's always there to support me, or I've never felt alone because I'm very close to my 
brother or sister who sticks up for me, whatever it is, they want you to think deeply and to reflect on that. They want to see if you can write about how you feel. So make sure that you don't take a think you're taking a shortcut by saying, no, I haven't felt that. You need to think deeply and to push yourself to write something. Okay. Number six is a little bit similar. They want you to think of a time when you felt completely alone in a difficult situation with no one to help you. So they want you to describe your thoughts and feelings in two paragraphs. So now they're asking you to focus, write a focused piece of writing. Two paragraphs, they're not very long paragraphs, okay, five or six sentences each paragraph. So you'll be writing 10 or 12 or one about the um, lines in total, or sentences in total. They want you to practice expressing yourself. So they want you to speak about a time when you felt alone. They want you to describe a time when there was nobody to help you. It Perhaps it's not the same kind of situation Michael finds himself in, perhaps not as dramatic as being lost at sea. Perhaps even just a situation like being uh, the last one to be picked up at school and you're sitting at, at school alone wondering if your parents have forgotten you or transport left you, or perhaps being lost in a shopping mall, not being able to find um, your parents. So they want you to describe how you felt, your feelings and your thoughts in detail. Okay, so you can describe your physical state. Maybe you felt like you couldn't breathe properly or maybe you felt um, anxiety in your body or adrenaline. What your thoughts and your actions were during that time. Maybe you, you started to cry or hugged your pillow or maybe you, your voice got very small. Whatever happened. If you disagree and feel that you've never felt hopeless or alone, then you need to express why in two good quality paragraphs. So you need to express what qualities you have or what resources you draw on that have meant that you've never felt alone or helpless. So you could elaborate on the situation that you mentioned in the previous question and just write it a bit further or you could think of another situation. You should be using strong emotive words because you're describing your thoughts and feelings. Anytime you're asked to show off your writing skills, they want you to show off your knowledge, creativity. Don't be afraid to use parts of speech, um, figures of speech, alliteration, personification, similes, metaphors, any figurative language to describe your thoughts, feelings and experiences. So you could say, I began to, to shake like a leaf in my um, I felt unsteady, as if the wind would blow me over. Good. Um, so you could go back to response to question six. I want you to look at this par these last paragraphs that you've written. I want you to please check that you've edited your writing. I want you to go now and I want you to add more detail and more descriptive language. So if you said, once I was left at school, and it started to get dark, perhaps you could go and edit it and say, one very cold winter's afternoon, when the sun barely made it through the clouds, I found myself, etc., etc., etc. Okay. If you're not happy with your first attempt, then you can start from scratch and write a new response. If you did not attempt this question, so you thought, ah, okay, this is not important, let me skip it, I want you to go back and I want you to give it another try. Okay. Think about any situation. Perhaps you were at home alone, or perhaps uh, you were stuck somewhere, or any time, and just go and give it a give it a go. All right, well done. Okay, I need you to make sure that you've made some corrections, that you've elaborated on your answer, you've made some additional notes somewhere on your work. You should not be putting just little ticks or little marks without any any guidance. I want to see that you've worked through these slides and that you've been making notes for yourself. Next time we will read the book review on page 84 of your textbook. After that we'll be working on the questions that follow. So if you'd like to read ahead you're welcome to go ahead and I will see you next time and I hope that you're all well. Take care.